we are live. Yes, we had some technical difficulties. I hope we don't have them anymore. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Anyone there? Cameraman, not if you are responding. Yes. Hi everyone. Welcome to join us in this live event. My name is Sorry. Here we are. Hello. Nice okay. to meet you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Although we just had some coffee at the marketplace yesterday, but good to see you. Coffee is good always. <laughs> yes. uh, I already introduced you when okay. I was out there. Um, and I actually wanted to start with your connection to Itala. It dates back to the 1996, right? You were here as a trainee. That's right. I was actually a design student at the time at the, at the University, University of Helsinki. And, and uh, yeah, I was very happy and lucky to, to get this uh, scholarship to work in Luta Järvi and Ippala last works. And, and 1996, summertime, I was here. What was, your, what was the first thing that you made? Three months here, so m many things. It was like a constant, like a dialogue with the product managers about 
what is Itala, what is Itala brand, how to how to work and and, and how is this collaboration with the glass blowers and and the brand itself as a, like a young designer at that time as a student it was like a very mysterious for me that right from the school bends to the factory how this works and uh, it was like a like a learning process of course this like uh, three months here and uh, and of course I think the most enjoyable thing was to to really have this uh, chat with the glass blowers and really like uh, learn this this community and, and this material in, in practice and and also these uh, these meetings with the like a uh, older colleagues like Oiva Toikka and Marco Salo and, and, and such that was very fruitful and, and very like a big learning process. Yeah, I understand that even talking with the glass blowers you kind of get to know the glass as a material but mm. but what actually initially inspired you to start working with glass or how did you come to this? Yes, it was like uh, as a design student, I didn't have any any like a favorite material at that time. I I I started my my design studies at the like the basic like work workshop studies with the wood and metal and, and, and plastic and such. And then this like the glass as a material, it came uh, possible to, to study at the university first time, uh, and uh, it was very very fascinating and. And something, some kind of uh, like a mysterious. I, I thought that there's a lot to learn in, in this material and, and this great grand history, Itala and Finnish glass industry. It was very, very like uh, in, inviting in a way, and, and mm -hmm. I was, I was very happy to to get into this this, this world. Yeah, Oiva is such a great kind of a teacher character if you think about him as a as an older one who kind of indeed it was taught you things i i, I never I, I understood like beforehand what kind of uh, world is uh, like awaiting me here in the factory and this this community it wasn't only that that i came here as a, as a student it was like uh, the people took me as a as a as me in a way that, yeah. that, that what are your skills and, and 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 what we can do together and and it was i thought that 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 is like a real thing that i i thought of totally that i'm like a sort of like student and mm -hmm. i'm still not like a matured uh, designer it was i was like uh, trying to to, to to learn everything what, what was around me yeah I have the same experience when I when I came here the yeah. first time with you around 10, 10 years ago or so yes. that that everybody is just like trying to work with you and trying to understand what you want and okay let's try to make it and yeah and it's still still like a, when I have a chance and, and possibility to come here to the factory that is always like like new new findings and a new new perspective so. You never know who you are facing here and, and, and who you, you are meeting and and what comes to you when, yeah. you when you are here. So this world is so different when, when comparing this to any other like, industry. That's true. Actually now uh, going to what we see on the other camera, we are looking at the glass uh, machine, like a pressing machine, it's called Colori. Uh, and they are now manufacturing one of your products called Valkea. We have it here. Um, could you say a few words like what went into designing this one and how is it to design for machinery? Yes, as we know, you can uh, produce glass items in various techniques. And this one is made, made with a pressing machine. And and when you design like everyday objects, you don't sort of you don't design for the machine. You you design for life and, and everyday use. And then, uh, then of course this a uh, team. It's this is always like a teamwork. So 
tennis, like what it, what method is suitable for this uh, concept that we are creating? And it is only it's not only usually like like one piece. Okay, that is like an exception. That is only like one piece in this family. But yeah. usually when you are doing like a table set, yeah. there are like various objects, and some are meant to be produced by by pressing machine, like uh, some like a certain kind of uh, tumblers. And, and, and voting so candle holders if they mm -hmm. are if this are like a method is fitting yeah fitting we, have, for the we have another one like for candles this uh, atlas here but that's blown glass right yeah actually i can i can take it here that was actually my very first uh, item uh what i designed which came to the uh, product um, available portfolio. I designed this 1996 when I had my scholarship. Yeah, yeah, that is blown, mouth blown, and actually my practice was like I spent like 24/7 in the glass works on that time, and, and all the daytime I was working in the mold workshop, building and and, and turning the the molds out of the wood. For five. So you made the molds yourself? So this mold I made the first one okay. by myself. And of course the, the mold maker in Nuta Refactory at that time, he was like a great help, of course me, that how it should be built. So it's, it's very tricky this one with like a very narrow mm -hmm. uh, spaces here and then you need to have this space for the candle and, yeah, and it's such. kind of going inside and then that's right. a lot of angles. And also that's quite tricky to blow since you need to have the, the glass very well centered. Otherwise, when you are like then uh, penetrating this this candle shape here, you see that if the like uh, the first first phases of the glass mm -hmm. making is not not precise. Yeah, then it becomes too thin here. You mean? Yeah, it might break there. Yeah. Or it might be too thick. Yeah. And, and so on. But yeah, that was the first one in production called Atlas, and also. The guys who are interested in Itala brand, this brand has been like developing by the years a lot since when I did work then like 24, 25 years ago for the brand. It was more like uh, uh, like this communication with the brand managers. It was mainly more like that that what is possible to produce out of the glass, what makes sense, and what we are missing from the Itala portfolio. Yeah. Since today, it's totally different way to. Mm. To do the items, we have the, some customer studies, and, and we have, of course, this like a huge competition out there. So we need to be very clever what we yeah. are producing on the, under the brand, and and it's not anymore like that much that I have like uh, some kind of thought for the production. It's mm -hmm. it, there has to be like a need for the items what we are doing. Yeah, so you don't produce something just out of, out of blue. Know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, that is also the fun part sometimes when you have a chance to work in, in with the glass blowers that 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 things are not that well planned beforehand. And that is the like a one of the most like a fruitful uh, moments here in the factory when you can have this like a free access for for the world of the glass making yeah. and just like to do the experiences yeah. and, and, and such. We have still one one product out of uh, the pressed glass range. You made this Oma glass. Um, now that we're still seeing the machine yes. there, I mean, I personally, I love the machine, but I also kind of, I'm a bit afraid of it because it looks like it, it has a mind of its own. Uh, but it's picking glass uh, and putting it in the oven and then pressing it uh, to the molds. No, dropping it into the molds, uh, and then there comes this kind of a press that then makes the shape. Um, do you think that there was something in particular with this one? Because you have like a thicker bottom mm -hmm. with the glass, but it has no visible seams mm -hmm. at all. So it's like one piece mold. Yeah, of course there are some some like uh, detail details when you when you are designing items for the pressing machine 
it has to be like releasing the shape has to be like a, a positive in a way and mm. um, it's like a one one punch but of course you can you can do more complicated items as well but then then they are maybe not that much like a mass production yeah but the, with this one as you see it's like well i think this speaks of the quality because there is no pattern or no kind of a relief on top of the glass it's still really really even and you don't see any bubbles or anything so mm -hmm. it's a good good mold and good design but also like a really good glass material actually now i think we could move on to glass blowing and i would like to invite tero to join us we have a master glass blower tero Kalima here also so let's see you in the middle hey tero hi hey. Good to see you. Have a seat. Thank you. So let's try to fit on the oh, here. Can you see us, everyone? Yes, you can actually come a bit closer to me. And Marty also. We are all on the screen. Yes. And now we are moving to the glass blowing. Um, Dero Valima, you have been working with glass factory here at Ithala for 25 years and I did the math and you have been very young when you started uh, how did you come how did you choose glass or did glass choose you how did it go when did you start um, my father is a glass blower uh, 30 years ago but we never never broke here is same time and I think it's my blood. Yeah. Ah, but uh, we have a school. We ha can change uh, arts. Ah, you, when you were in primary school. Yeah. You didn't study art, but you studied glass yeah. design. Already when you were like what, fifteen or fifteen? That's insane. That's a long time with glass, <laughs> and you still love it. Yeah. What fascinates you with the material? Hmm. Because melt glass is like a uh, melt honey. It's like honey. Yeah, it's like it's, honey. Yeah. It needs a lot of uh, rhythm. And eye and hand. Yeah, eye and hand com coordination. Com coordination. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we talked about this earlier, and, and you said that the most important uh quality of a glass blower is rhythm and when i like the first time when i came here and every time since when i look at you guys working it is sort of a choreography it's like a dance so you need to know your steps and you need to know your rhythm otherwise you will be ending up on someone else's way or burning yourself or you know burning someone else <laughs> or <laughs> breaking something so it is tricky. Um, what do you say is the most challenging thing in blowing glass? Like for instance, uh, now they're blowing the lantern, uh, the big lantern by Harry. Uh, we have it actually here. And we talked about this is a huge piece. So for starters, it's really heavy. But uh, what is the most tricky part uh, in blowing this one? For instance, uh, besides it's big. Yeah. This is because it's a uh, it's long and mold is very. It's a tiny waist. Tiny, tiny waist, yeah. And we can see what's the happen in the mold. We go. We yeah. we have to know in the hand what we happen. Like uh, because we don't see it. That's true, because if it's kind of a closed mold, so you don't see uh, inside of it when you are when you are working with this mass. Um, for instance, when you're working with all the ways, you actually see what you're yes. doing, but this one is, is closed, so you need to feel in your hands that it's the glass is di divided evenly, and how yes. is it? And it's need to practice. practice. I will give this to you. Yeah. I will, I'm afraid of breaking it. Um, um, then I have a question for both of you because you are working together and you have been working together since the 90s. So 
Uh, what is the rule? Like, how is it between like a designer and a glass blower? How is the relationship, and how do you work together? Yeah, it's like like uh, we talked a bit earlier. This is how important it is to to have this like a dialogue with with the master of the glasses, and uh, they they have the skill to to really realize the designs and, and thoughts of in in glass material. So somehow I also studied just a tiny bit glass blowing as well in the in, in the school, but I, I never learned to, to, to blow with it well. But so I somehow I, I, I got this idea of what is possible to do in, in, in glass. And that of course helps me with, with this communication with Terra for example that that I have sort of like a like understanding what to do and, 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 and I might not design to difficult things for glass blowing. So what has been the, the like a most like a giving giving here is this like a, that that we can communicate and have this dialogue and, and then I, I been I have learned so much from the from the blowers when I when I started to to work with, with glass design and it's it's like a piece by piece you yeah. you learn learn all the time. What would you say there? Is it like throwing ideas back and forth or or is it just like you try to make what is on the paper? Uh, I think it's normal it's a designer has to take a compromise because yeah. it's a lot of uh, technical things. Technical yeah. Thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that is the, the I think that the good compromises are making the things somehow even better. Since the glass as a material is very natural and if, if you try to push it in the wrong direction then you somehow see it from the end product as well. So you need to understand the glass as a material and and, and you need to somehow have this like uh, instinct what is possible and what is good from the glass material. Yeah, yeah I think well, both of you are talking about not forcing the material into a shape that it doesn't want to take but of mm. course you want to push the limits a bit and uh, and then maybe find something uh, new uh, do you think that there is room for creativity uh, in uh, and experimentation in the glass black factory Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. At least if it's up to you guys. That's why we are here in Itala. Yeah. In the in house of wonders. I have this one uh, memory you shared there that there was this one time that you needed to work together on an, a board, was it? Uh, that then Harry had already left the factory and then you needed to, or someone had to call him and ask about like how did it go, where's the drawing and Harley was already. Where were you? You were on, at the airport, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and how did that go about then? You just discussed on the phone. Yeah. He takes a picture and sends it. Mm. And then, do we have it here? Is it here? The award. What What was that piece? That one. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But I need to admit that that is the very complicated right from the start. Yeah. But the, that was made for the, for the glass globe competition this award. So I, I really wanted this play with like a solid glass and with this like a mouth blown. This like a light and solid. And I like a challenging you guys, of course, as well. And that is the one of the one of the solutions how to do it. Yeah. And and yeah, it's can you it's show well, it to well the made. camera? <laughs> But yeah, that's one way that then you have worked together for so long that then you can just give each other a call and just explain over the phone and and this happens. That's fantastic. I, I actually have one question for you. Um, as you have worked with so many design companies around the world and also like other glass producers, what would you say that uh, Itala Glass Factory is like in expertise? Uh, I don't know where to start since 
I mostly I have been working in here, and and, yeah. and and the guys in here they are very, very professional. Starting from the glass material and the glass colors, and the whole process how well everything is made, and then then we have the the great glass blowers here in house who really just they just know how to do things out of the glass and and there's somehow I don't need to explain anything too much it's it's very natural and, and obvious what we are what we are doing here and, and I think that both parties we like to, to challenge also also with each other and it's it's very fascinating that we have this Italy glassworks running well here in in, in the forest in the, in the heart of the Finland yeah it's kind of unique it's kind of unique at this point, I would actually uh, like the camera too that we have there on the hot workshop to move to the cold workshop. Um, because I have a question for you, Tero. Um, I have heard and I know that blown and handmade glass items are always unique. Like every Alto vase is unique and every lantern, everything that you do by hand and mouth blown. Uh, techniques, of course, there is like slight differences in thickness and you know, you know, but of course we as you know, we don't really see, they look like perfect items for us, but I heard that you guys can tell the difference between uh, who has blown each piece. So you kind of have your own hand print or is it then like mouth? blown uh, fingerprints <laughs> how do you call it that then would like Aki at the at the cold workshop actually could he tell who made this one he can but in the team we can really yeah because every every people takes little different but we, we take in the same pieces but it's little, little different techniques and Normally, it's all the ways we can yeah. say who goes. Is it the thickness or? Yeah, it changes. Yeah, how you divide the glass mass when you yeah. blow, if it's thinner or thicker on the bottom. And yeah. That's so fascinating. Um, actually, then, uh, we've been talking for half an hour and I have not asked any questions from the audience. My apologies, I just get so carried away. I think now it's time. Um, there's a lot of questions I hear. Okay, uh, let's see. I have some here from our producer. Um, there's a question. I always wanted to know what makes modern glass usable or unusable for a washing machine. Do we know this? <laughs> For example, uh, frutta, uh, the oiva toiko glass, why can't you machine wash it? Is it so? It's mouth blown. <laughs> yeah. It's really delicate. It will break. And it's many colors. It's not kind of up and down. It's not... Okay, yeah, now I get it. Uh, yes, so the, the reason is that for instance, cartio glass or other pressed glasses like this Oma glass, you can wash in machine, right? Yeah. Yes, because it's thicker glass and it, the technique allows it to be very uh, uh, unified or that they are all, all the same. But as we just talked, when you mouth blow items, there is some differences in the thickness and also some of the colors that are used in the mouth blowing, they won't really react well to differences in the temperature that happen in the washing machine. I'm looking at Tuya there. He, she's expert, so I, I'm getting a confirmation that I don't lie to you guys. Um, then there's another question. How hot does it get at the factory? Depending on if it's summer or winter, I would say. Summer, we have sometimes um, close to 50, I think. 50 yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Normally, normal it's uh, 28, 29, I think. 
Yeah, and you need you actually have to take breaks in every two hours or so. Yeah. Uh, I've like noticed normally, that. You, yeah. yeah. Normally we work uh, 45 minutes and 15 minutes break. Yeah. Okay, so every hour you take. Okay. Yeah, because the days that I've spent here, I always get a headache in the end because I never remember to drink water enough because you get so excited and and you kind of don't remember to drink but i hope you guys do uh, then there is a, a lot of comments hi exciting interview just curious to know what italas item is the most difficult to make i think it's uh, every blow is Ah, true, yes. Because some guys take a lot of birds and sometimes it takes a lot of it. Yeah. So you all have like your strengths and weaknesses. Like the other one is good at making oikotoika birds, which is more like arts, artsy, very detailed kind of things. And then the other one is better at blowing huge pieces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it depends on the blower. Anything else? Where can I check what glass is mouth blown or pressed? It's uh, in the package and of course on our website. Thank you. I think I have, I think I have finished. There is uh, a lot of comments uh, still going on. Uh, one is Harry, you did Prisma art piece and it was launched 2017. Was it made in clear glass even like a prototype? Ah, the, yeah. That, it was part of the artworks optics and it's casted here in the, in the factory as well. And uh, in, in that specific piece, it's the, the gold workshop skills they were tremendous since since the idea was to have like bubbles inside of the glass prism to to play with the optics and with the like in, in the the space inside of the glass object but then when you have like a bubbles on this many faceted glass item like this and when you need to cut the sides and then how to avoid the bubbles that they are not coming to the like surface holes, yeah like cheese holes like a cheese hole so that was a tricky piece to, to, to finalize, but so happy that, that Itala really <laughs> were able to make it. I have one final question for you both. What do you enjoy most in your work? Hmm. Is it the process or the result or the community or maybe for me it's the, the whole whole thing around this design the, that you meet people you meet persons you you learn every day things and and so on many various things i think it's uh, we can make them nice pieces and people yeah make people happy with nice yeah. pieces of art with glass. That's a good answer. Still after 25 years. Yeah. You make me all teary. Okay, guys, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. This has been a privilege, as it is always, to work with you. Um, uh, I hope the audience enjoyed. Um, we're wrapping this up now at the Italo Glass Factory. Uh, but it has been a pleasure. It was a nerve-wracking first experience, but there's four more. Uh, you will see me in the last one, but in between, please uh, join tomorrow at 6 o'clock with uh, Jukka Savolainen at the Design Museum. They will talk with uh, Paola Antonelli from the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, New York. Uh, and then you can find the whole uh, program on our website, also Design Museum or Ita website, just check it out. Join us at six o'clock and enjoy Helsinki Design Week. 
go check the Kaleidoscope exhibition at the Design Museum Helsinki. It's still going on. Last week, last chance. It's huge. It's beautiful. It's interesting. It's everything. See it. And I will see you later. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>